the center of the hate, the center of democracy, but there is just one little exception, which is here the National Institute for Monarchy and Dictatorship. Uh, although they call themselves a multi party democracy, they are the ones behind us. So I thought <laughs> that you will be explaining to our police officers here why it's so bad. First of all, I want to thank police officers. Thank you for guiding us here. I mean, it's really the opposite of Uganda, right? The police officers receive us at the bus. Actually, I wasn't sure how to walk, but this gentleman showed me this is where it is. And uh, that was quite convenient. I mean, we should, you should have been at the ICC bus, because then we got lost, <laughs> right? This is exactly yeah. <laughs> So thank you very much, Dutch police, for making, for making this possible, that we have our little uh, demonstration uh, here. And uh, Chairman Yanzi, maybe you want to uh, explain to the, I think, some officers here, and to the people here at iPods, why we have a problem with this institute and with iPod. Yes, of course, we represent the all Ugandans who are not satisfied with the iPod. We have our dissatisfaction. We think iPod uh, is helping the civilian overstaying power to make, you know, our political parties useless parties. I will request Comrade Weiser to come and elaborate more. Um, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Uh, welcome. Welcome. My name is Alex Weiswa. I am. Uh, I am. Uh, just a short. Alex, this, this is great. The director of uh, the institute. His name is Thais. Ah, he is here. Yes. So thank you, Thais, for coming here because uh, you told me on the email that you would only be available in the afternoon. But I'm really happy I that you're here. I had an engagement in Utrecht nearby, but I cancelled it when I knew that you were a bigger group than two people. And I think it's important to speak with you. I'm happy to see you. Thank yes. you for coming. You're welcome. It's a bit unfortunate that we couldn't convene a better t time slot, but okay, we're here. Yeah. And actually, um, there are 50 of us. But uh, oh, the rest is coming. You know, the, you know, the, we the, left the, them the, there. Please think that it would uh, be too much. Dress. Aha. So we left them behind in the bus. Good. Yeah. Oh, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, we are very humbled as well to be here. Don't. No, we are Citizens. humbled. Citizens. Citizens. <laughs> uh, Alex Weiss from Fumira is my name. This delegation is from Uganda. Good to see you. Uh, many of them are coming from di different parts of the world. But what puts us together, the single denominator, is that they are all Ugandans. And uh, some coming from the US, others are coming from the UK, others are coming from Geneva, from the Schengen countries, and others are coming from here. And then us, we are coming from Uganda. We are members of uh, the National Unity Platform, a political organization in Uganda. I am the deputy spokesperson of that organization. He is the in charge of, uh, his chairman Yanzi, in charge of uh, mobilization of uh, the National Unity Platform. And the reason we are here today to interface with you now, the director of NIMD, uh, of, uh, of, 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 of iPod. NIMD. But we call it NIMD because yes. uh, iPod is just the institution of interparty organization well, dialogue in Kampala. Yes. Now, our challenge is one with NMID is that it is an institution of assurance of democracy. And in Uganda, it is there to ensure that probably there is democracy. But again, the regime has used NMID and the resources that come from NMID through the organization of iPod to stampede democracy. And it is very disturbing that even when, at least this is in the broad daylight of Ugandans, iPod and NMID have remained adamant to the real issues of democracy in Uganda. For example, in this last election, General Museven abrogated all the rules in cover of COVID, inclusive of refusing independent international observers to ensure that democracy, the whims of democracy are realized. That was very unfortunate, and that was the beginning of the most horrific madras torturous and archaic election mm. our country has faced. Mm. Not even the one that took Genome 7 to the bush 
was as equal as this one because on the 18th and the 19th of November, the Luwuka massacre that day we will never forget as Ugandans. Mm -hmm. General Museveni sanctioned the commando unit from Somalia mm -hmm. and murdered. This is on uh, camera, this is on his own admission that 54 people were murdered, headed by now the late Loket. Mm -hmm. In such a process of election, we believe that is not a free and fair election. And what perturbs us that in a country where NMID is, that is supposed to propel all citizens to peaceful mm -hmm. and understand the conditions of democracy, mm -hmm. despite the continued effort you have had back home, we believe that you have not exerted enough uh, responsible pressure to the dictator. He has taken your existence for granted, mm. and in fact, he uses it to our disadvantage. Mm. There is an assertion that we receive money as mm. a party mm. from your organization, mm. which mm. we do not, mm. because you know that the National Unity Platform has not ratified the memorandum mm. of the inter-party organization's dialogue. Right. We therefore also wonder why we should continue to talk about dialogue, right. where a party that was uh, that tyranny was orchestrated against is not party two. Right. We are here first of all to give our voices yes. that NMID, you have a role to play for yes. democracy, and you started with this because you wanted peace in the world. Yes. In Uganda, it is not representative of peace. Mm -hmm. And what was disturbing was uh, uh, the tweet after the election, after we had lost lives in Uganda, and then. Institutions that you are funding went out. Yes, the tweet uh, was like, We call on Uganda's political parties to de escalate the tension that prevails in the country in the interest of the population. Mm -hmm. These political parties are a representation of the people, they are not a representation of, they are not companies, they are a representation of the people. In fact, sure. for us as National Inter Platform, we are anchored on the simple ideology of people power the power of the people unfortunately we have not had any mid talk about the incarcerated members of parliament of our organization we have honorable sejirinya we have honorable alan sawanya and these were elected to represent their people in parliament very unfortunately as you accepted the process and asking us to put down the tensions you never asked the government to also involve itself in putting down the tensions and releasing the political prisoners who exceeded over 3,000 in our motherland. So we are here for that as a purpose and we are glad you've given us the ear because we do not want to be accomplices to what may happen in our country when it happens. We are on a time bomb and we request that NMID either if the regime is not willing Mm. Instead of assuming the name democracy mm. that is enshrined on your initials, you would rather not work with Uganda until we sort right, out right. that internal right. right. problem. Because yeah. your existence yeah. there yeah. gives yeah. them an yeah. advantage yeah. to show the world that there is democracy, and yet there yeah. is no yeah. democracy yeah. in Uganda. Yeah. I thank you. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, oh, no, thank you. Uh, to introduce, uh, to say something. Of course, you are the director of NMID. Do I get the floor as well? Or? Absolutely. I will yeah. give you a minute. Yeah, you will get the floor. We want to just to <laughs> finalize and then we'll give you back the microphone. So Go thank ahead. you very much. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so thank you very much, Ahmed, for the analysis and the brief history behind it. The main point is that we think and know you could do much better. And we think you know that you can do much better as well. The problem is that there is sort of a, a diplomatic approach toward Museveni by Western governments that see the benefits mm -hmm. in having him there. They talk about the issue of Uganda is very hospitable to refugees, for example, without finishing the other side of the equation. Why do we have all these refugees in Uganda in the first place? <laughs> mm -hmm. In the case of South Sudan. Yes. It's because when there was a dispute between Riyak Macha and Salva Kiya, instead of forcing them to compromise and negotiate, Museveni went there and intervened militarily mm -hmm. on behalf of Salva Kiya. Yeah. Escalated the conflict, and that's why they fled to Uganda. And now he goes around the world saying, oh, look, <laughs> I'm protecting them. Mm -hmm. Give me money. 
and they gave him money, which of course was stolen. And the governments that want to maintain him would pretend they don't know that. So we are disappointed. And we're not saying that is one particular instance that you went along with that. But that is just an example of what goes on. So now let's go to the issue of democracy in Uganda. Mm -hmm. The name clearly states Institute for Multi-Party Democracy. It does. Institute for Democracy and Electoral Assistance Uganda. And that's what we, we want. Idea, huh? That's what we want in Uganda. Yes. So if you want dialogue in Uganda, how can you have dialogue between a big elephant and little mice? You know, that's not dialogue. So to help the little mice also raise their voices and their issues, there has to be some conditions. Tell the elephant, we want true dialogue, so these are the conditions. What are we negotiating to it? Yeah. By the next election, can we at least ensure that we have an independent election commission? Yeah. Not the dictator himself selecting the people who announce mm. <laughs> who he claims won the election, regardless of the number, because everybody knows Nuke won the last election. Mm -hmm. This is the first time ever that the United States made an unambiguous statement. The elections were neither free nor fair. That statement is still on the website of the State Department. Sure. The U.S. never came out so unambiguous. But this time they knew Nuke had won. Yeah. The only entity that you could declare that Nuke won this time or Nuke will win in 2026 is an independent election commission. Yes. If the dictator wants, let him select his representatives. Let no select representatives and all the other parties as well. And then let's have elections with monitors. You know, one party can't decide, oh, I, I will select who are the monitors, like the dictator did. So now you have a level playing field. Independent election commission, independent observers. Let the election get carried out, and whoever wins, we accept the results. Right. And we think this institute can be a big entity in helping us set those conditions. And we hope that you will live up to that expectation. And anything that we can do on our end Excellent. to help you get there, we are more than happy to facilitate. So thank you for coming down to listen to our news today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Yeah, thank so you. Uh, you can now respond. Thank you. <laughs> but for clarity, I wanted to have you yes. by my head. So my name, you can say it again. My name is Thais Berman. I am the executive director of NIMD since three and a half years. Wow. Before that, I have worked in the Central African Republic to support its uh, national electoral board organizing elections in 15 and 16. Before that, I worked, uh, after that, I worked on press freedom. Before that, I was a member of the European Parliament and I have headed several election observation missions in Afghanistan, twice in Senegal, and in Ethiopia. And I've always wanted to work in democracy support there where democracy was fragile and under attack. Um, because it is my strong belief that only a political system where the rights of each and every individual are respected, only such a system can guarantee social justice, equal chances for all, and peace. So this is the deep motivation of NIMD and my personal deep motivation as well. What we see in Uganda is that we have facilitated the dialogue through this iPod platform since 2010. And it has always been a dilemma. And we never work in easy countries. You don't work in countries where democracy is healthy. We come where some work needs to be done with the people. So this also goes for Uganda, obviously. And it is a good thing that NUP is now a fully fledged political party with very active members, many, many young people, strongly motivated to make Ugandan democracy live. And it's admirable and courageous, the work that you do as for young people in other parties also, but in particular also for NUP, I, I acknowledge the courage people show to make their democracy live and to let their voice be heard. Um, before NUP was a party, it could not participate in this dialogue because it was a movement, it was a bit unclear how to engage, you see. 
but now it is a party. And the fund through which we have been supporting political parties by training, by can now also benefit NUP. Last week we took up contact with NUP and proposed that young members of the party will engage in this fund and be trained to be the politicians of the future of the country. And I hope that NUP will respond favorably to this. Now the dialogue table, it is one thing what we say in public. It is another thing what we say in private to our interlocutors, you may understand. Our mandate is that to facilitate a dialogue. And we know it is an imperfect dialogue because there is a very important partner missing here. NUP is not there at the table. And NUP says, as long as you don't free our prisoners, as long as you don't stop the violence, we don't see how this can be a meaningful dialogue. There is no point in having it. As much I can understand this, it's a legitimate opinion. That does not mean that I can say this myself because we are the kind of impartial facilitator and we encourage all in all political actors to express their conditions to participate to set their objectives for this dialogue to be meaningful but we consider that we need to be prudent in our own expression if we want to be able to play the role of the facilitator we do this in every country where we work mind you in colombia where we worked with former uh, people of the farc you know the, the, the armed uh, movement in, in the woods uh, and with government it's not our role to be activists even though we are very activist in wanting to pursue the democratic values that we want to defend. In Jordan or in Iraq or in any country where we work, there needs, you need democratic reform, you need to tackle the terrible social injustice in Mali, in Burkina Faso, and if you don't, people will no longer trust democracy, they will in the end, even embrace coup d'etats as in Burkina Faso. Mm. It is not these people to blame, it is the elites to blame who have never dealt with the injustice in the country. So, but that is also something that I cannot say as an executive director, yeah. because it's not my mandate to pursue social justice, even though it's, I'm convinced that without social justice, democracy will not live. Absolutely. Uh, uh, it is my mandate to analyze this, to write it down. I train Democrats. I organize, our organization organizes the dialogue. Our organization encourages young people to, to get their legitimate place in democratic forum, in elected bodies, in municipalities, in uh, regional bodies, in, in parliament. I was in Ethiopia a few weeks ago and a young woman said, yes, I'm the Secretary General of, of the youth movement of my party, three and a half million members, and I want to be the next Prime Minister. And I've done your course, and it helped a lot. And I was very impressed by the motivation and the ambition. IPOD has now come to an end, because it goes from, mandate, from, from, from parliamentary mandate to parliamentary mandate. We have made it clear that even though six parties have signed the Memorandum of Understanding for iPod for the future, there is one important party who hasn't. And that's NUP, with the red caps. Because she's in prison. <laughs> not only she. I want to symbolically... And, and you never yeah. talked about them. And it's not yes. talked about. She's I explained she why I did not talk about them, because it is not our role to be activist in demanding this or that. Okay? That is right, but, but you're not impartial. I, because I, that tweet that Mr. Weisbach just uh, read, uh, where you called on all parties to dis escalate the tension, that was a, a total uh, misinterpretation of the situation. I'm very sorry because, that you read but, it that way. 
No, that, but that's what it, that tweet says. So you're yeah. not in party. And furthermore, you're a representative in Uganda as a former member of the Electoral Commission. No, he was not. Yeah. That's wrong. Yeah. He was not. He was wrong, and this, this is slander. He is wrong. It's slander. Mr. Tice, this is in your own magazine. I'm sorry, this is factually wrong. This is factually wrong. I don't. I cannot, magazine. I cannot let factual errors be said. I'm sorry. I don't accept that, and I protect my staff, and I protect my my employees. Really, they are doing a difficult job. It was not easy, and perhaps we make mistakes here and there. Yes, no doubt. We are all human beings. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about them. If we, in a prudent tweet, call for all parties. No. Can't be. One second. That goes back to the elephant and the mice. Once Please. I understand your, right. your your speech about the elephant and the mice, <laughs> there would be a longer discussion to speak about that, by the way. But uh, mice have a power. But uh, yeah. as you know, do you think? But but what I want to say is this: mm. if I or we, in a prudent tweet, call for violence to cease, then. There are a few actors in the country who have the means to oppress and there are other actors in the country who have the means to protest. And it is obvious that this was aimed at all interlocutors, in particular also including the government. But sadly, most That's very people clear. don't see that. Like, no, because, because I want to maintain, as an IMD, I want to very much protect this impartial, independent position, which is difficult. It means that sometimes you will be accused of siding with one, sometimes you will be accused of siding with another. And so be it. It is difficult, but so be it. I understand know? the dilemma, mm -hmm. and I think that goes back to what uh, Comrade Weiser said. The dictatorship is also aware of that dilemma. And I think the dictatorship milks that to its advantage by using any association with an organization like yours to legitimate, to legitimize Perhaps. their activities and benefit from it. And that's the kind of diplomatic cover that it. they already get from Western governments. We don't think they deserve to get it from anybody else. Yes. And we think that's where you be can become understand you. much more effective in taking a different course, even if it involves changing your mm -hmm. constitutional mandate. If iPod is to continue, which is not up to us to decide, we have said to all interlocutors within iPod at this moment that for us to continue, the dialogue needs to be meaningful. Yes. Meaningful means inclusive dialogue. Inclusive means... But the only problem is that we have in seven who never come on table with the killing hands. Yeah. Whatever discussion historically has done, yeah. he has never fulfilled, yeah. he's always manipulative, yeah. and he, yeah. he has his own end. Yeah. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. So that for us, it is not clear if we can continue this dialogue, because if, it, if, if meaningful, meaningful means inclusive. Meaningful listening to all parties, meaningful means also discuss the demands of political parties and their de legitimate wishes. That is on the table. Including independent election commission, including independent observers. And that election. is something for you to say, because that is your legitimate wish. And if the elephant does not accept putting those on the table, then perhaps you should consider not being a part of the process. Going back to what the French. Probably. Otherwise, yes, you will be facilitating, wittingly or not, propaganda on behalf of Museveni. Because yes. that's what he wants. He wants to be accepted as a Democrat when, in fact, in reality, he's not. I understand <laughs> you. What our interlocutors in Uganda also tell us, and not only uh, within U NUP, uh, we spoke with uh, Bobby Wine a few weeks ago. Um, our manager about a doll uh, was in Uganda and has spoken with him quite a long time and the appreciation for the efforts of uh, NIMD were very clear from his side. Also he reiterated that you need a meaningful dialogue, a meaningful platform and that is completely legitimate. So uh, a French author Stendhal uh, once said I admire, I admire strength 
but the strength that I admire, an elephant can have as much of it as an ant. And I think that, uh, coming back to your uh, metaphor of the elephant and the mice, uh, it is not the size, it is not the uh, superficial power, it is the strength of the will that counts in the end. But unfortunately, the victims play in blood in Uganda. The 54 figure, which Comrade Weiser said, was the government's official figure. We know the numbers are vastly... I know, and I follow Bobby Wine on, on Facebook and I see what happens. And when it comes to strength, there's no better demonstration of strength than somebody who won the elections. Yes. Knows he won, the population knows he won, the international community knows he won, and yet he has not called people to come out to the streets. Yeah. He has not. Perhaps we should come to an end. Perhaps we should come to an end of this discussion. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you live in the Netherlands, or live, or, or otherwise, we can do it online. Yes. I am very open to continue this discussion. Very good. Because at this very moment, we are in talks on how to, if to continue iPod and under which conditions, right. how can we and IMD without losing our reputation exactly. as an independent and impartial actor, how can we continue iPod? Right. And for that to happen, we need very serious talks. Exactly. And it will not be an easy talk. Absolutely. Clearly. Thank you. So I am very open to continue talking with you. I will be very glad to get your expertise, your insight. I am sorry that not had to be so far away from Uganda. And I haven't even been in the country yet because of COVID. I would have been otherwise. And then I would have talked, of course, with the leadership of, of NUP. And I haven't been able yet. I'm sorry. Right. Do you have any uh, business card with you maybe, or something? Um, okay, I think uh, Nico has our, all our contact details. Yeah, because we need allies. Thank you very much. We do we need allies. We need right allies here. as well. We are not fighting no. dialogue. We, are not we want meaningful dialogue. No, I understand you. Yes. I get you completely. Thank you very but much. Let me before you and conclude, I, there's something yeah. I wanted to clear yes. the facts. In, 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 in your brief discussion, uh, you talked about the National Unity Platform, and you are aware it's not a member of iPod. Yet, yet. Be, be on record. Be, be on record. You are not, it's not a member of iPod, anyway. and does not receive funding from iPod. That's, and that's what that we want to be clear. sure. Yes. Yeah. And you it doesn't receive any funding from yes. iPod so far. Because it is supposed to be there by yeah. Yeah. But NUP is a political party. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. NUP okay. can benefit from the DGF fund now. DGF Although not suspended. yet. No, no, no. And the suspension DGF. has been lifted. We cannot Last speak week. about what has been lifted yesterday. yesterday. That was right. Yesterday. Yeah. Has been lifted. So yes. now so. it will be open and we already contacted NUP from benefits from it. Let's train. Let's train your people. So thank, thank you. you. We are talking about, we are talking about iPod, iPod thank and, you. Yeah. and, and before. Because there is a, there is a tendency of merging NMID with iPod back home. Well, which are and, different. And we, we have these stated are, exactly yeah. these are that different we are Exactly, that's the statement one said. They are different. With iPod. And iPod, and iPod, iPod is different from so NMI. We are not receiving any money from iPod. We that must be members, members, yeah. Yeah. Yes, we can be members of mm. NMID, but we are not members of iPod. Yes. On camera, can okay. you clarify the difference for, for the viewers who are listening in, please? IPOD is the secretariat of the dialogue platform so between political yeah. parties. Yes. And IMD is only facilitating and supporting this platform. Right. We are not the same entity. We are an organization from the Netherlands. We work in over 20 countries in the world. IPOD is a Ugandan entity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'm sorry not to be able to give in to your demands completely. No, it's all right. I hope you understand. The voice we have is different. Oh. Thank you very much.